Okay, this sermon's entitled, Billy Graham, a False Prophet Till Death. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners, I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'd like to open up with um, Proverbs chapter 15. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a, brand, is a breach in the spirit. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. Now, Billy Graham preaches like a fool. <clears throat> I don't know how, ever, ever since I've listened to him, it's always the same message. He talks a lot about the cross. He talks a lot about forgiveness of sins. I've, I've, I've never heard him say anything about eternal life being a free gift. Now, I'm not saying he hasn't. I'm just saying I've never heard him say it. But I've noticed that he, he always talks about repenting or changing. And in his latest sermon that he did for his 95th birthday, he starts off saying, saying something to the effect of, God demands a new lifestyle in us all. And he, he wants us to live out the message of the Sermon on the Mount. But then he goes on to say, God will help us with this. First of all, God does not demand a new lifestyle in us. What God has demanded, Christ took care of. So turn to Colossians chapter number 1. <clears throat> See, this is a false teaching, is what this is. This is a false prophet. Okay? This is baloney. I can't believe people actually fall for this. Because his name's Billy Graham, that means he must be great and godly and teaching correct. Wrong. He's not teaching correct. Colossians chapter 2, actually. Okay? He said that God, God demands. He doesn't suggest, but he demands a new lifestyle in us all. Then I'm going to read a few more things he says. He constantly says repent. Um, he says believe means to commit. And that's a lie. Believe does not mean to commit. Believe means to, you know, to have faith, to trust, to take God at his word. Okay? Believing actually means to agree. Okay? It does not mean to commit. He's a liar. He's a false prophet working for Satan. That's why he says that. He's trying to deceive people. Then the one, another thing he said was, um, he's telling people they have to change um, their lifestyle, and he's constantly talking about repentance. His prayer at this, the end of the, the stupid sermon, or whatever you want to call it, was talking about repentance in the prayer. Like, I turn from my sins. I, I, I you know, repent of my sins. And that's not salvation. What he's, what he's in essence doing is telling people how not to be saved. He's telling people how not to trust Christ. Trust in Christ means you're putting your faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. You believe that he died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and then he rose again. He paid your entire sin debt. He paid it all. And, and you're trusting in him only to save you. And it's a one-time deal. Okay, you believe on Jesus Christ, you're saved forever. Okay, that's done. You know, that's what the Bible teaches. It's not continual trust. It's not continual faith. It's not believe and, and repent and all this garbage. It's not repent of your sins. It's you believe on Christ and you're saved. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. I don't see how people do not get that verse. Okay, it's that simple. John 3.15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And this message is not being preached out of the mouth of this false prophet, Billy Balaam, the bastard false prophet. It's not preaching this. He's mixing it up. He's, he's putting a little bit of truth out there, but he's mixing it up, and that does not fly, because a little leaven leavened at the whole lump. You don't add falsehood to, to the truth. You keep it the way it is. You keep it unalloyed, and you keep it clear. You keep it untainted, unspotted. You don't mix anything with it. There's no additives when it comes to the truth of the gospel, okay? We don't have to change our lifestyle. And besides, changing your lifestyle is, an, is a post-salvation issue anyway, and it has nothing to do with your salvation. God does not man, 
does God does not demand, excuse me, back up. God does not demand a new lifestyle, you know, in us. What God has demanded was that the, our sins were put on the cross and they were nailed to the cross and they were taken away. Let's read the verse, Colossians 2. This is what God demanded and this is what Christ already accomplished, already fulfilled. It's done, it's finished. Okay, it says right here, <clears throat> in whom also we are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Now what does that say? God has already raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That's, that's our payment. See, every person that's alive, their salvation has already been paid for before they were born. That's why it's, it's offered to everybody. Now, I want to tell people, I want to tell everybody how to be saved. But I'm, you know, and that's what Billy Graham said in that this stupid video. He wants to tell the whole world how to be saved. No, he wants to damn everyone's soul to hell by giving them a false gospel, giving them misinformation, telling them something that, that's not going to save anyone. He's a liar. He's a false prophet. He's a fake. He's a fraud. He works for Satan. And to hell with Billy Graham. Okay? I'll tell people how to be saved. That Jesus Christ paid it all. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Why can't he quote that verse? Why can't that verse come out? You know, John 3.16, they quoted it at the end. That's like the whole redeeming thing of the whole video. It's not the King James, though. It's the NIV version, perversion. Okay, look, salvation is accomplished by Jesus Christ only. Let's keep reading. Okay, and you being dead in your sins and the, and the uncircumcision, uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. See, it's, it's always about what God has done for us. Okay, now look at the next verse. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. That would be all the sins we committed. Sins are a violation of God's word. They're a violation of God's law. They're against us. The consequences of our sins are against us. But Christ blotted them all out. Okay? The handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. That means our sins have been paid for in full. Change of lifestyle? I don't think so. I think what, what took place was our sins were, were took, taken away. Now, he's demanding that we change our lifestyle. What the Bible says is you don't have to change your lifestyle because your lifestyle, no matter how bad it is, was paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ and it was nailed to the cross. It was taken away. And if you want to talk about the cross, tell people about that instead of telling people what they have to do and they have to carry their own cross and they have to repent of their sins. It's, it's a lie straight out of hell and I'm getting sick of it. Okay? I mean, it's kind of funny. These false prophets, they demand that you change your lifestyle or bear fruit. Think about it. If Jesus Christ paid it all, and he's the only thing that's going to get us into heaven. And that's, that's the case. That is what the Bible teaches. Then why does a change of lifestyle have to take place? Isn't that basically implying that Jesus Christ is not enough? And therefore we have to do something to help him out? It's, it's just total blasphemy is what it is. So Billy Balaam is, like I said, he's an enemy of God. Turn to James chapter 4. And I'm, I have never liked, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be straight with you. I've never liked Billy Graham. Never. Uh, there's always been something about him I didn't like. I just couldn't figure out what it is until lately. Now I figured out he's teaching false. He's a liar, teaching false doctrine. You know? You know, here's how you know if they're a false prophet is when they say things that are not in the Bible. Okay? When you're given the, the altar call and you're telling people how to be saved, you just keep it biblical. You don't you don't mix in stuff, mix in false teaching and your man made man made words and rhetoric and, and jargon and whatnot. You keep it biblical, and that's that's what you do. And he doesn't do that. He mixes in all this other stuff. You know, telling people they got to change their lifestyle. Believing means commit. Give me a break. He's an enemy of God, and here's how we know this. Number one, everyone likes Billy Graham. People are going to get mad that I'm, when I put this sermon up. Oh, no, don't say anything bad about Billy Graham. He's our hero. Well, he's not my hero. And here's what, here's what the Bible says about him. James chapter 4, verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Billy Graham is loved by the world. This, he's somebody that you don't say bad things about. You, you, you can't say anything bad about him because everyone likes him. He's a false prophet, liar, enemy of God is what he is. 
Okay? If you're preaching the truth, you, nobody's, the world's going to hate you. Jesus made that clear. The only people that like my sermons anyway are saved people anyway. All the unsaved, you know, all these unsaved reprobate devils out there, they hate my sermons. And I, I, I want them to hate my sermons. Because as when they drop into hell, they're going to get to hear my voice echoing in their, in their ear for all eternity. You know, you should have listened to what he was saying. You know, he was telling you how to be saved the Bible way. He was giving you, you know, grace. But no, they didn't want to hear this. And so I don't care if, I, if people dislike this. If a person dislikes this, it just tells me that it's of God and that they're not, you know. And if people like my sermons, it tells me that they're of God and the ones that don't like it are not of God. It's that simple. But see, the people that, that like, the, they like these, these phonies out there, they like Billy Graham, it's because they're an enemy of God. Let's read it again. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of, of God. And see, think about this. If, if you're a pastor, if, you, if you're a preacher, if you, if you love God and you love God's word and you want to you know, tell people you know, how to be saved and whatnot, are you going to be friendly with all these, these you know, detractors and liars out there that are coming against it? No. But see, people like Billy Graham are, friends, are, friends with the, are friendly to everybody. Okay, that tells you they're an enemy of God. If you want to be a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Hey, I, I wouldn't be friends with some stupid atheist. I wouldn't be friends with some Muslim. I wouldn't be friends with some false prophet teaching the false doctrine, false, false plan, plan of salvation. And I'm not friends with these people. That's why I call them out. I'm letting people know they're not my friends. They're not my brothers and sisters in Christ. People get they say, why, do, why, do you, why are you so hard on these other believers, other Christians? Because they're not Christians. Okay, that, because they're the enemy of God. And that's why I'm not going to take to them well. I'm not going to be nice to these people. You know, I don't like these false prophets out there that are teaching wrong. You know, they're disgusting in God's eyes, and God is sick of it. And God is sick of the Billy Grahams of this world lying to people, deceiving people, changing his message. Okay, turn to James, turn to, um, not James, turn to Galatians chapter 1. You know, this is, people, you wonder why people get so mad about this. Well, it's something, it's something to get mad at. Or to get mad about because this is, these are people out there perverting the gospel. People actually are are duped by these false prophets because they think they've been preaching for 50, 60 years, and everybody everybody loves their you know everybody likes these people, these phonies, phonies, you know these televangelists and whatnot, <clears throat> and everyone thinks he must be telling the truth because he's well respected and but it's but it's baloney. It's it's, it's satanic. It's, it's not God. God's not behind this. He's just, you know, these people are just working for sake. Okay? The people that, you know, are teaching the truth are the ones that are not going to be loved by the world. They're going to be hated by the world. Okay? They're going to be preaching the gospel correctly. And Billy Graham's not preaching the gospel correctly. So let's turn to Galatians chapter 1. It says in verse 7, Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. Talking about the gospel now. Okay? And would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, adding works to the gospel is another gospel. Okay? And we said before, as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. It means let him be anathema. So let Billy Graham, let Billy Balaam, be anathema. Let him be cursed. Because he's preaching another gospel. Okay? And that's all I have. People need to stop listening to this deception. You know, how many people out there are going to get shocked by this? Probably everybody that, 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 that's not aware of this. Okay? People that add repenting of your sins to the gospel are false prophets. Okay? They're, they're, that's all they are. See, what they've done is they've looked for a, a, a seemingly biblical way to deceive people without letting people, you know, they seem it's well, repentance is in the Bible, it must be true. Yeah, repentance is in the Bible. Repent of your sins, turn from your sins is not in the Bible when it comes to salvation. When it comes to salvation, here's the clear salvation message We are sinners. Therefore, because we're sinners, we cannot save ourselves. Okay? God has provided for us a Savior. It's His Son, Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and then He rose again. He shed His blood for us completely. Okay? Now, He gives eternal life as a gift. It says in Colossians chapter... Let's just go ahead and turn to Colossians. <clears throat> 
It says in, in Colossians chapter 2, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. You receive Christ Jesus. You receive eternal life as a gift. How do you receive the gift? By believing on Jesus Christ. Faith alone in Christ alone. That's it. You believe on Christ and then you're saved forever. John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the message. And you don't add anything to it. You don't subtract anything from it. You keep it, what it the way it is. That means if you believe on Jesus Christ, you will never perish in hell. You are saved, saved forever. Once saved, always saved. And I'm not afraid to keep saying that. And then you, you have everlasting life as a gift and you're going to live in, you're going to live forever in heaven. That's the gospel. That's the message. That's the message in its perfect clarity. I didn't take anything from it. I didn't add anything to it. I kept it, I kept it the way the Bible says it. You know? And, and I gave Bible verses to back it up. Okay? Billy Graham's not teaching this. Yeah, he, he says John 3.16 a lot, but that's not what he really believes, and that's not what he's really teaching. Because what I've heard him say many times, that nobody will go to heaven if they don't repent of their sins. I've heard him say that. And they are false prophets. There's nothing wrong with teaching repentance, but if you teach it like that, you're a false prophet. Okay, Repenting of your sins is something the believer, the saved believer, should do on a daily basis to get right with God, to, to get blessed by God, to have a better life, and that's it. It has nothing to do with going to heaven okay, or, get, or escaping hell. It has nothing to do with it. <clears throat> so that's all I have. Watch out for these false prophets. They're everywhere. I'm, putting, I'm doing this video to let people know, don't fall for this garbage. You know, Sure, we, America should, should come back to God. But you're not gonna, it's not going to happen through that mess, that teaching. You know, All this phony... Listen to the video if you don't believe me. It's, it's, just, it's just fraught with, with the work salvation message. It's pathetic. It's pitiful. Something's got to be done about it. And so that's why I'm preaching this sermon, to warn people about this false prophet. He's working for Satan, and he's straight out of hell. That's Billy Graham. That's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>